Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today we're going to take a look at the uh, auction results from Rob Michael's sale. Uh, it was a two-day auction of Chinese and Japanese art that was held on uh, October 31st, November 1st, and today is the 6th, so it took us a few days to get around to uh, pulling up the images and checking on it and see what went well and what didn't and all that good stuff. But we're going to take a look at it because the, the results overall were quite good and there were some surprises of things that he'd had in previous sales that for some reason didn't sell or, or sold and just didn't get paid for. I don't understand why, but uh, this time around everything did fine. And uh, what we saw here and what we saw in some sales in London and the last sales over in Hong Kong, there seemed to be some, some interesting trends occurring in the uh, Asian art market. And we're going to talk about those in next week's video a bit more when we take a, a sort of do an autopsy of the Bonhams sale. They had, Bonhams had a sale, by the way, this week, if you followed it, that did phenomenally well. Um, and we're going to take a look at that. But uh, today we're looking at the Michael sale. And uh, he, had, uh, he had a good day. He had a, he had a good couple of days here. And uh, we're going to start here with this. This was that very, very nice Japanese bronze uh, dish. It's actually a charger. It was quite large, uh, beautifully done. We had talked about it in some detail. I thought the estimate on it was extremely reasonable. Uh, this was a splendid example all the way down. Meiji period, great gilt work, nice relief work, good casting, very, very fine detail, signed on the back. All that good, good stuff you want to hear. Had a very modest two to four thousand uh, euro estimate, and it ended up selling for eleven thousand euros plus the buyer's premium, which is is I believe about twenty seven or twenty seven and a half percent with Rob. So you're up around uh, you're up around fourteen thousand dollars all said and done. Uh, but it was a really great example, and I'm I'm not terribly surprised it got to this price. Uh, but it was an excellent thing, and it was a good size. It was fifty three centimeters which is, uh, how, how big is that? That's roughly uh, 20 inches, a little over 20 inches in diameter. So it was a nice big piece. Good example. And then over here to uh, this, this very nice uh, later Ming period, Wan Lee Markin period vase uh, that did uh, just great. It had a 25 to 50,000 euro estimate and it hit the high end of the estimate plus the buyer's premium. So the all in price ended up at around 60, uh, uh, 60 to $68,000, somewhere in there. Uh, but a nice example, a big one. And a similar one of these, I seem to remember, had turned up in a sale somewhere else um, fairly recently, very similar. And uh, we'll, we'll come across that, no doubt, in future videos, and we'll see how that did. And we'll try to pair them up and, and do sort of a comparison why one brought what one did and one the other didn't. Okay. At any rate, so that did just great. Had 15 bids and uh, had a lot of interest in it. We had a couple of inquiries about that. And now on to this, the pair of Famille Rose, uh, I mean the Femi Ver vases, the Kung Shi period vases. These had been in one or two of Rob's previous sales, and they, I, I, from what I gathered, they just didn't get paid for. And in, the, in one of the most recent sales, I think it sold, they sold for about 38,000 euros plus the buyer's premium. And they were back in this time, and, and Rob, being tenacious as he is, decided to re-offer them. And uh, this worked out amazingly well. They brought 85,000 euros this time plus the buyer's premium against a 20 to 40,000 euro estimate. And I had said in previous videos, I didn't know why they didn't sell, because I thought the estimate was extremely reasonable. And uh, this time they did, they caught on to some people, but you need two people to make a horse race. And uh, I, I, again, I don't know why people bid and uh, bid on things and don't pay for them. Uh, you know, before the sale, you get your, you get your condition reports, you get all your information together and then you register to bid in the auction. And this was a specialty part of his auction where I believe deposits were required. So um, fortunately this time I suspect it'll get paid for, but uh, they're a nice pair of vases, very attractive. And these were big, these weren't little, uh, these jars. They were 64 centimeters, so they were about 25 inches tall each and uh, handsomely decorated, very, very nice quality decoration, good overglazed blue enamels, good, uh, good uh, shading and very, very finely detailed all the way through as you can see. Nice, nice pieces. And then over here to this, the big uh, relief worked, uh, molded relief work Kang Shi uh, period jardinier. This was a beautiful thing. Uh, and notice the quality of the relief work. Very crisp, very sharp, very high. But also the decoration on this pot uh, was extremely well done. 
very finely worked. Uh, the, the way the clouds are coming down, the way the light the light reflections off the rocks, and the way they shaded in the cobalt, all of it. This is a very very lovely example of Kung Shi blue and white, uh, splendid, nice sapphire, deep sapphire blue. And this pot was good size. This thing was 65 centimeters in diameter. This was a big big piece of porcelain. So this was this was uh, 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 roughly 26 or so inches wide and 48 centimeters tall. So it was a, it was a, a very good sized planter. It ended up selling for 120 thousand dollars, 120 thousand euros rather, plus the buyer's premium. So you're up around 150, 60 thousand dollars with this at a 50 to 100 thousand dollar estimate. But what a heck of a piece of porcelain! What a beautiful example! Really was, really was. Uh, and then over here to this, that very nice pair of uh, Wushang Pu vases that we had talked about in the last uh, in the last video. We did the preview. I thought these were just great. I thought the colors were vibrant and strong. The handles were nice, big gutsy handles, uh, very nicely decorated through the body. You notice that the colors are bright and strong. Uh, the, the the painting uh, quality, the brush strokes, the way the, the the figural depictions is excellent. And then this uh, very nice, almost Prussian blue. Um, um, or, or lapis blue balustrade running around it all framed the scene very very nicely and I guess a lot of people like these vases uh, they were estimated at 15 to 25 thousand euros they ended up selling for 52 thousand euros plus the buyer's premium so you're uh, how big were these these were big though they were they were uh, 86 centimeters tall almost three feet tall uh, but a really fabulous looking and very, very pretty pair of uh, 19th century vases. And they, they did have all the, uh, the Wu Shuang Pu uh, uh, characters on it, and they were all identified, which I think really helped make these uh, uh, pop as far as price goes. Because I, I can't recall the last time I've seen a pair of those. Very nice. And then over here to the next section, uh, let's see here, right here. We had talked about these, the Benkarong spoons. Um, the, there was a big section of spoons, rare spoons at the beginning of the sale, Chinese porcelain spoons. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting collecting category because some of them are just so, so fabulously well done. And they are, relatively speaking, a, a sort of a bargain in the Asian art market because they were a utilitarian uh, item, uh, uh, you know, obviously. Um, they, they never got, a, they don't tend to get a lot of attention. And a lot of them are broken. They're, obvi they're very susceptible to breaking. So unless somebody had bought them and collected them and stored them carefully for a long time, a lot of them tend not to survive. And this was a pair that I talked about before just because I love the color, I love the condition of these, and I was really curious to see how they did. They ended up selling uh, for a thousand euros against a one to two thousand euro estimate, uh, plus the premium. So you figure they, they sold for about thir almost thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, but but very nice, very interesting uh, objects, and I, I think somebody got a nice a nice buy with that. Those were pretty. And then there was this also, and I threw this in just to, to show some comparison because we had talked about this, these Benkrong bowls. Uh, they do turn up in the market. Um, they turn up on eBay fairly often. And I was curious to see how it would do here as opposed to how they do on other sites. And uh, it ended, this bowl ended up selling for 600 euros. Uh, so with the buyer's premium, uh, you're at about almost $800. Uh, so it brought a good, strong price in the end. Uh, and uh, these are, you know, highly collectible. And this one, though, I mentioned, uh, it was in, I thought was in good shape for one of these because they tend to have a lot of wear um, very quickly because they were heavily used in the culture. And this bowl looked to be in good shape. We had talked about, as you may recall, the interior had very, very little wear, which is unusual for these. Often these these bowls have a lot of wear to the inside, uh, to the enamels especially. And this one looked particularly good. So it brought a, a better price than average. A few weeks ago, I think there was one on eBay that had a bit more wear to the inside and sold for around three or four hundred uh, dollars. So there's, there's quite quite a quite a spread there based on condition. Condition matters. Condition, condition, condition. And then over here to the Buddhist Lion Ming Swato dish that I had talked about. I just thought this was a great dish. It wasn't a particularly large piece of Swato. It was about 10 or 11 or so inches tall. I'll check it in a second. But it, was, it wasn't a big one, as I recall. But the, the quality of the enamels and the condition of the enamels in this, in this, this plate were very, very good. Extremely good. Uh, the, there's no wear to the center. And as I've mentioned many times, Swato pieces often have lots of wear to the center because they 
they were used so much. Uh, and uh, but some you know some pieces weren't shipped into the markets into Southeast Asia to be used as much as they were. A lot of them were shipped to Spain and Portugal and and, and to Europe at the same time. And uh, this was a nice one. It sold for 1,200 euros plus the premium, and it was how wide? It was 12 centi 33 centimeters wide, so it was around uh, roughly 13 inches in diameter, somewhere around there, roughly. All right, so it wasn't one of the great big ones, the 15, 16, 18 inch examples. But I think this was an excellent purchase, whoever got it, because of the condition. Um, very, very good, excellent. Because Swato pieces just can get worn to death. And then back to this. This was something I wanted to see. This was that modern base by Sang Mao. And uh, it, was, it was done around 2002. I just thought it was a great thing, uh, to, a real highlight of, of what they can do today in China as far as contemporary porcelain work goes. The detailing around the top was absolutely superb. The shading of the enamels was nice. It was just a, a, a good example, a good solid example. If you, if you have sort of a broader view of the Chinese porcelain world and you want to see what they're doing now, because they're doing some great porcelain work in China today, really fabulous. And it, it, and I urge everybody to, ch to check out some of the stuff that's being done over there. Um, there's some great artists decorating contemporary, contemporary pieces and, um, and, and doing you know, things that were never done before. But this is done more in a traditional manner, but nicely, nicely done. And uh, it ended up selling for 3,200 euros against a 3,000 3, to 6,000 euro estimate. So by the time you're all in and done, it, it ended up being around uh, 4,000 euros. So, so it hit right about center of their uh, estimate. And I think that was a, probably a smart buy for someone. I really do. And it, this thing was big, too. That was the other thing. How big was it? It was 46 centimeters, uh, 40, 40, yeah, 46 and a half centimeters tall. So it was, it was roughly uh, around um, uh, 18 inches in height. Good size pot. And then over here to this, I thought this was a great buy. I didn't see the condition report on it, but this was that very nice um, Usai decorated transitional period vase with the lotus flowers all over it and the overglazed red decoration. It was all in nice condition. The condition on this pot looked to be very, very good uh, as far as uh, a lack of wear goes all the way down through the body. <clears throat> it was a good sized pot. It was a, over, a little over a foot tall and it sold for 1,800 euros plus the premium. So it sold pretty close to the high end, the high end of the estimate. But I think it was a, a nice example, and I don't think that was at all a high price for transitional wares, which are which are slowly, uh, increasingly getting more of, to be of more and more interest to Chinese porcelain collectors. Because a long time, Chinese uh, uh, Chinese uh, the Chinese domestic market, the Chinese market, as they say, for for, for transitional wares was very weak, and a lot of people in the West were able to collect them. Most famously, the Butler family, who built one of the, the greatest collections that ever existed of transitional wares and um, um, because nobody nobody in China was interested in them they, they, it's actually known as the last the lost period there's a book titled that about these porcelains and uh, this, this I think was just a, a nice example and uh, you know for twenty five hundred dollars you, you know uh, I mean twenty four hundred euros which I think is perfectly fine and then on to this. This was one of the surprises of the day. I had an, I had a couple actually. I had one inquiry on this chest when, when, uh, through the inquiry program on bid amount, on the uh, on the uh, preview assistant. Uh, somebody had asked about it, and I hadn't really looked at it that carefully. And um, when I looked at it, I didn't agree at all with uh, Rob's uh, uh, dating of it. He thought it was probably Republic period. And, and I can see why uh, to some degree, but also the, the, some of the elements of this, particularly the carving and the proportions of the case, looked older to me. And I thought, you know, it, it just by what I could see from the photographs, it's, it was at least a mid, uh, you know, mid, mid, mid 18th century or, or, or a mid 19th century or earlier piece, so, you know, 1800 to 1850. Um, at, at least, and because uh, it just looked too good to be Republic, and they didn't do a lot of really fine uh, uh, carving of this quality during the Republic period, and it had a one to two thousand euro estimate, and ended up selling for forty four thousand euros plus the premium, so you're up around fifty five to sixty thousand dollars for this. Now, I think this is part of the trend that we've been seeing with Chinese furniture, Chinese uh, fur wooden furnishings and so forth, cabinets, chests, boxes. We were remember a few weeks ago we saw that uh, sale of Ming furniture which just went through the roof and we saw the same thing repeated in the London sales just this past week after the sale was done. Furniture was overall very strong and selling in multiples of the
their of the estimates. And I think that there is a bit of a, a dynamic happening here with Chinese furniture, high grade Chinese furniture. Uh, collectors are beginning to to recognize how, just how rare it is increasingly, and the, the porcelain area has been collected heavily, and now people are looking into furniture, which is uh, high-grade furniture is actually much scarcer than high-grade porcelain, I think. At any rate, 44,000 euros, nice thing. And then over to this, the bronze, that dandy little uh, a bronze uh, a cup that I talked about in the in the previews, in the preview video. I just love this thing. I thought it was great. I like the surface. Um, as I said in a few other videos, somebody in, in some some places they tend to oil these things like this to make it photograph better and make it look better under light. I I'd, I'd rub that off gently and, and just let it go natural, but. That's just me. But this was a very nice example. And the chimeras, as you recall, are quite large. Uh, there's a side shot of them showing you how big they are. Here it is. There it is, this nice, big, gutsy uh, chimera climbing up over the rim. And the two of them are facing each other as though they're almost sort of smiling at one another. This had a three to 6,000 euro estimate. It ended up selling for 5,000 euro plus the premium. So again, uh, it sold for about, about, about 500 euros over the high estimate. But it was a very nice example and it, it doesn't surprise me at all. I thought it was a, a nice thing um, um, on all, all counts, just a beautiful example. And then over here onto this, this really nice uh, uh, underglaze uh, uh, blue and underglaze red uh, 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 Ming Dynasty plate uh, for the uh, Japanese market. Uh, very interesting scene, a well-known scene. And here you have the, the, the fort and the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pole uh, and so forth and the, the banners flying off of it and, and men arriving, a uh, scholar arriving with an attendant. Um, riding a riding a mule and nice dabbles of underglaze red copper red in the in the glaze and uh, this caught a few quite a few people's attention evidently they liked it and uh, it ended up selling for a good bit over its high estimate of 1,200 euros going for 1,600 euros plus premium so around uh, around 2,000 euros for the plate but a desirable type very well done and it looked to be in great condition which is really critical for these but nice pot ni a nice piece. And then over to this. This was my favorite piece of crackware in the whole sale. I just loved this thing. I liked it because I thought the center pattern was extremely unusual. Very, very rare with the, the pairing of phoenixes circling around the flowers. And then this very handsome, strong inner border in cobalt blue. There were a couple of flecks in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in, in the glaze and the enamels here and here. But overall, this was just a, a, a terrific piece of Wand Lee. Very interesting, very unusual, and I think the price was completely deserved. It brought 6,000 euros plus the premium, so around 8,000, 8,400 euros. And it was a good size one, too. This one was uh, 51 centimeters in diameter. I wanted to double check it to be sure um, of, of, exactly. So it was, it was, it was r roughly 20 inches in, in diameter and in good condition and ended up selling for about 8,000 uh, or so euros which is around uh, roughly $10,000 US, which I think is perfectly reasonable because it's a rare one. It's a rare one um, uh, compared to others. And the blue looked particularly nice on it. And then over here to this, this was sort of a surprise of the day. I thought the estimate on this was a bit a bit on the low side. This was uh, uh, 24 cups, uh, uh, cups and saucers, um, all 18th century, obviously, uh, nicely done. But this was a huge lot, and I assume they did it as a big lot because uh, probably quite a few of them had nicks and airlines and whatnot in them. But somebody obviously, a number of people obviously looked at them and did some calculations and realized what they could probably get for this lot if they broke it up and pieced it out uh, uh, in, in individual items. This is the kind of thing that dealers just love because there's, there's lots of fertile ground for uh, uh, working combinations of them and you go to sell them um, uh, to make yourself some money. And um, I'm wondering how they're going to break this up. Yeah, as I said, it had an 800 to 1,200 euro estimate, and it ended up selling for 10,500 euros, which puts you up at around 13 to 14,000 euros for the lot. Um, and it may just, you know, it, it, it may, may have been uh, de come down to competing bids between two people that wanted to have an instant collection of blue and white. Who knows? Uh, uh, there's probably an interesting story behind this, but that was that was a good price for that. And uh, maybe at some point we'll find out how, where they all went. 
Okay, and then over to this, the yen yen base. We talked about this in the last video because I thought the estimate was very reasonable. Um, this was a very nice example. This was the one that had the phoenix, uh, the pheasant rather on it, and very nicely done uh, blossoms in the upper section. And uh, we went over the piece in some detail because I just thought it was a good example all the way around. Very handsomely done. It was slightly it was slightly misshapen, which is not unusual for yen yen vases, but it, it had nice detail, beautiful butterflies on the back and so forth. And in the end, uh, the estimate didn't mean much. It, was, it, it ended up selling for 14,500 euros plus the premium, so 18,000 euros against a four to 8,000 euro estimate. So um, about two, two and a quarter times its high estimate. But that is what good yen yen bases sell for. So I, I had just had thought at the time, maybe they had a low estimate on it um, and maybe there was something wrong with it. Uh, uh, Rob's estimates, I don't think, are, if you look through his, his, his sales results and add on the buyer's premium, you, you, which is, is what, uh, what estimates include the buyer's premium. It's not just the hammer price because the buyer's premium is a significant part of the ultimate selling price. You'll see that his estimates are, are quite reasonable uh, most of the time, um, certainly uh, within range uh, and, 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 and quite accurate, but they, they do go over. And in this case, they did. But nonetheless, it's a handsome vase, and it brought right about where it should have. And then on to this, the, uh, the Kangxi fish dish. I, brought, I had mentioned this in the last video because there had been a bowl, a Kangxi bowl in the same pattern that sold um, just about a week or so before this sale or two weeks before that brought seven or $8,000. Now, they made many fewer of the, of the plates than they did the bowls. The bowls are, are quite a lot rare, quite a bit rarer. But uh, this, I thought, was a nice one. I think the quality of this one was certainly as good as that bowl that brought over $8,000 uh, or $7,000. But um, excuse the cell phone interruption. It was somebody calling about uh, our Google account. <laughs> any rate, it was a scam phone call. Any rate, this is a nice plate. This was a beautiful plate and um, good color. And in the end, it did fine. It went over its uh, it went over its high estimate by a good bit. It ended up selling for two thousand euros against an eight to twelve hundred euro estimate. Uh, but I, I think I'd mentioned the last video. I wouldn't be surprised if it went over that because this is a desirable pattern, and uh, the ultimate selling price on it in this case was about twenty six hundred euros. So about doubling its high estimate. But it's a rare form. It's a rare form, rare type. And over here, um, near, we're sort of nearing the uh, back end of everything. We're not going to go through every lot because it was a, a very big sale. But do go over and, and, and check it out. Rob's uh, website is Rob Michaels, um, RM uh, Auctions, uh, in, in RM Auctions. Uh, dot com over in the in, in, in Belgium. You want to check them out. Uh, is this armorial plate? This was a very nice one. I thought it was handsomely done. I liked I liked the decorations on it. Um, uh, the the borders were nicely done. It had a nice shaped rim on it. Uh, the gilding was in quite good condition, and it did fine in the end. It ended up selling for uh, 4,600 euros against a uh, three to 6,000 euro estimate. So by the time you're all done with this, you're just about at the high estimate on it. But it was a nice example, a genuinely nice example, and in good condition, which is crucial. And then the last thing we're going to look at is this was that very nice Japanese big big Japanese Arita bottle, this big guglet. I love this. I like these things. I, I like the uh, the uh, scrolling of the octopus leg, uh, as they call them, uh, framing around these nicely done flowers, uh, good good looking neck on it, going up strong neck, and then this this reliefed area around it for, for, for attaching uh, with a rope, tying covers onto it and so forth. It had a two to 5,000 euro estimate, and in the end it sold just about at the high estimate, at 3,200 euros plus the buyer's premium deserved price though nice example and uh, this was a 17th century example of course and it was big it was 50 centimeters tall so that puts it in at about a 20 inch tall pot uh, very very nice and it's interesting because back in the 90s pots like this were selling for uh, double and triple this price uh, so now if you're a Japanese arita collector collect now because I think they are uh, relative bargains out there but uh, be careful they are making copies of Japanese arita wear now more and more and more um, you want to be careful about that. But uh, that was a, a sort of a quick look at Rob's sale. I think it was a good auction. I think they did. They always do a good job. And um, I think the results overall were quite accurate in line with the uh, estimates with some, uh, some uh, surprises along the way. And uh, that's the way it goes. 
But uh, that's the way all auctions go. All right. Um, we'll see you all with the next video. We'll be doing the uh, regular weekly video today as well. And so check that out. If you're not a subscriber with us yet over at bitamount.com and uh, you're thinking of joining the global member pages, please do. And uh, don't forget to join the forum. Put some things on there. Um, you get to know the, the folks who use the site. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be back later on today with our, our other video with a regular weekly roundup. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.